Hey, welcome to Microsoft Soundbites. Uh, we wanted to start a new series of short, sharp videos that just do an introduction to, to some key topics uh, that you'll, you'll run into when you're, you're getting started with Microsoft development. Uh, I'm Gez, I'm the uh, community development person. <laughs> I can't remember my title. It uh, happens at Microsoft. Well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I do, uh, um, developer relations at, uh, at, at Mycroft and Barry. <laughs> I go by Stratus in the community. Um, I'm just a community member. I, I help to maintain the uh, home assistant skill inside of Mycroft. Um, I work for Red Hat and uh, yeah, I just like to tinker around in Python. So I'm just a regular guy. Unlike, unlike my esteemed colleague here who, who knows all the Python, um, I know enough to get by. <laughs> um, I, I unfortunately don't yet know all of Python, but <laughs> I'm not sure many people do. Uh, but uh, yeah, all right, let's 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 get into it. The first video, this video is going to be about the Microsoft Skills Kit. So the Skills Kit is a small Python package that gets distributed with your installation of Microsoft, uh, and it just helps you to get started really quickly with some basic, uh, basic skills, um, and then also submit them to the marketplace. Um, when they're ready for broader sharing. So let's jump into the command line and, and take a look at it. So we're going to look at Mycroft MSK, uh, which if you added the help commands to your path, um, should, should be on there. But if you, if you hit enter, um, we'll, we'll get some help text to show how we can use it. Um, if it does say that, you know, the Mycroft MSK command cannot be found, then you'll find that in Microsoft core slash bin slash Microsoft MSK. Um, so you can always call it directly from there if it's not on your path. So there it is. Um, but today we're just going to look at create. So we're going to create a new skill. So Microsoft MSK create short skill name. So, uh, let's do, let's talk about ice cream. Let's, uh, Pretty universal thing, generally universal thing. Looks good. And now we want to enter some some example utterances or phrases, um, things that users are going to say that we want our skill to respond to. Um, so in our case, it might be something like, um, "Do you like a certain flavor of ice cream?" Um, and so what we can do is, because we don't know what flavor, um, we, want, we want people to be asked about any flavor, right? So, so we're going to create what's called an entity um, using curly braces. So do you like curly brace flavor ice cream? Um, and what this will mean is that users can then ask about chocolate ice cream. They can ask about mint ice cream. They can ask about any, any flavor of ice cream um, and that flavor entity is going to be available in our skill um, for us to use. Cool. Um, we can add as many as we like, but for an example skill, let's just, let's just stick with a simple one. Um, what are we going to say in response? Um, well, maybe... if we're a shop, why don't we say uh, coming right up? All right. And what we can do is uh, let's put in a second one that, that uses our flavor um, entity. So we can, we can do the same curly braces flavor. Um, uh, and then comma coming right up again or, or you know, whatever. Yeah, there you go. And so what Microsoft's going to do then is, is it will respond with, with one of those responses. Um, and so sometimes it'll say the, the, the name of the flavor and sometimes it won't. Um, and that just adds a bit of variation so that um, users don't just get the exact same thing every time. Cool. Uh, let's move on. So we've, we've set up um, what people are going to say to our skill and what we're going to say in return. And then the next bits are around, uh, you know, providing descriptions around what the skill's about. So the one line description is the first line that comes in your readme on your, on your um, repo. It's also what's going to show in the Microsoft Marketplace in the in the short view. We want to try and keep this below 50 characters. We can, you know, 
it's all ice cream. Perfect. Um, and then in the long description, we can provide as much text as we like. Um, you know, it's, you don't want to overload people. Um, they're only going to read so much, but you know, as much as you need in there, uh, when people click through to your skill, it'll show a full page that's, that's just your skill. So you can, you can enter in as much information as you like. Cool. Uh, author, um, you can put your name, obviously. Um, often people will put their, their GitHub handle as well, but um, whatever. Uh, now we have an icon. So for each skill, uh, if, you, if you look in the marketplace, you'll, you'll notice that there is an, an icon. Um, if you go to that link, you'll be able to see a, an enormous list of options. Um, I know for a fact that ice-cream exists, so we can use that. Um, and then you can pick a color for that as well. And, and it changes the color in a few different places, but predominantly for the, for the icon. By default, if you just hit enter, um, it'll use the Mycroft light blue that is that, that hatch value there. Next is where the skill comes in the marketplace. Uh, so you'll see that there's a few different categories. You can, um, the first one is the primary category and then you can pick secondary ones as well, but the primary category is, is where it's gonna sit in that marketplace. Um, so entertainment sounds good. Once you're done, you can just hit enter to move on to the next question. Tags are an alternative way of searching for things um, or filtering. Tags, you can make them whatever you like, or you can have no tags at all, that's fine too. This is a quick way of choosing a license. So uh, by default, we provide a few, few you know, common options um, that uh, are going to be fine for the marketplace. We do require that skills um, that are listed in the in the Mycroft marketplace have an open license because then it means that we are we're guaranteed that we can freely distribute that. But uh, by default, everything in Mycroft is an Apache version 2.0 license. Um, you can also skip it and not have a license. Um, it just won't won't get into the marketplace just yet. Uh, here's where we can select whether or not to create a manifest file. It'll let us define um, dependencies for our skill. So we might have Python dependencies, we might have system packages um, that we need to, to run our skill, um, or we might require other skills are installed for our skill to work. Um, so if we think that we're going to need those, then we'd, we'd um, answer yes. I think let's do yes for the moment, just so that we'll have that file there and we can, we can take a look at it in another video. Sure thing. Um, and then whether we want to upload it to GitHub or not. So, um, you know, particularly if you don't, not overly familiar with GitHub, um, it's a nice, easy way to get, get set up quickly and easily. Cool. And that's it. We now have a new skill. Excellent. Um, it's located at op slash Mycroft slash skills slash ice cream shop skill. Um, and it's got a bunch of files in it. We will take a look at what's in there in another video. Um, we just wanted to keep these nice and short and sharp. In this video, we just briefly covered what MSK is and how it helps you basically set up a, a Hello World project for Mycroft without having you do much typing. It basically holds your hand through the Hello World process and it sets up a nice templated project for you in order to help you along. So in the next video, we're, we'll talk a little bit about the files that it creates and, and what you might want to look at in some of the files. But for this one, uh, I think we're I think we're pretty happy with uh, just having created our Hello World yeah. ice cream shop. And if, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if, you, if you've got Minecraft running on the device that you were using this on, then it would already be adopted it would already be picked up by Mycroft and, and running. So um, at this point, you could you could uh, trigger the device and and uh, ask it whatever it is your sample phrase was, and it should respond appropriately. Good, good. Then we'll see you in the next video. See you then.